NVIDIA has spent the past two years selling the idea of real-time ray tracing. And I mean really selling it. There was the Star Wars demo that they showed everywhere. There were some high-profile partnerships with developers like EA to bring it into Battlefield. But there was one big problem. Ray tracing on the RTX 20 series cards was a serious resource hog. Just ask anybody who played Control on PC. That's where the new GeForce RTX 3080 comes in. Its new Ampere architecture is significantly faster than the previous Turing generation in practically every way. Most importantly, it can tackle 4K with ray tracing while keeping you close to 60 frames per second and in many cases beyond. And while it's pricey at $699, it's not nearly as expensive as the $1,500, technically $1,499, RTX 3090. What's most impressive about the RTX 3080 is that it's not just a successor to the 2080 from before, it actually blows away the 2080 Ti, which cost a lot more. That was a 999 card, whereas the 2080 was 699 just like this one. No matter what you think of NVIDIA's hype-fueled marketing, that's a serious performance leap, and it's a no-brainer purchase for anybody who's avoided the last generation of cards. Before we dive into the specs here, let's talk about what ray tracing is and why it actually matters. Basically, you can think of it as a more realistic way of handling lighting in games. Ray traced light sources can cast accurate shadows, they can have the reflections appear perfectly on mirrors and other reflective surfaces like that. Basically, the way light works in the real world is the way it'll work in the game. Developers have come up with ways to kind of fake that with rasterized rendering before, but it was never true to life in the way ray tracing could be. And while all this may sound superfluous, uh, based on what I've seen from Control and even Minecraft with ray tracing, it can truly make a game feel a lot more immersive. The 3080 Founders Edition that we're reviewing isn't much bigger than the 2080 Ti from before. It's also kind of professional looking, it's understated, there's some fins and lots of metal and very large fans, but none of the crazy lighting you'd see on some third-party boards. The cooling is also dramatically different than before. NVIDIA actually made the PCB more dense on this card so that they could fit a fan in the back that basically pulls air straight through. And there's also still a fan that is pumping air through the side ports as well. They also moved over to a new compact 12-pin power cable, uh, which you can use your existing cables just fine with a connector that comes in the box. But all of this basically helps to save room on the PCB and uh, you know make it easier to get air flowing through it as well. Under the hood, the RTX 3080 is powered by 8,704 CUDA cores, 68 RT ray tracing cores, and 272 Tensor AI cores. That's more than twice as many CUDA cores as the RTX 2080 Ti from before, and while its RT count is the same, the new architecture is around twice as fast. Surprisingly, its Tensor Core count is dramatically lower than the 2080 Ti, just 272 compared to 544. But again, NVIDIA claims this new generation of Tensor AI cores is significantly faster than before. And if all that isn't enough, NVIDIA also stuffed in 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X RAM, a new type of memory that's making its debut in the RTX 3000 GPUs. All of that hardware is in service of making the 3080 the fastest GPU we've ever reviewed, although I'm sure the 3090 will blow this away when, whenever we get to see that. In the shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, it reached 82 frames per second with all the graphics set to high in 4K and also ultra-level ray trace shadows. It clocked in around 2,500 more points in the 3D Mark Port Royale RTX benchmark and uh, around 1,500 more points in Time Spy Extreme, which is all about 4K gaming. So these are huge leaps over the past generation. The 3080 also made Control playable in 4K with ray tracing, which honestly surprised me quite a bit. Uh, I was able to see around 53 to 60 FPS with 4K, ray tracing all turned to high, all the graphics settings turned to high, although I did have to turn on DLSS to make that happen. And DLSS is NVIDIA's technology that basically renders a game with lower resolution textures, but uses AI processing to upscale them and make them look almost as good as native 4K. Honestly, in many cases, I think DLSS looks better than what 4K does on its own. In comparison, the 2080 Ti topped out around 40 frames per second with the same settings. Running control natively in 4K without DLSS lowered everything down to 32 frames per second, which honestly isn't playable for me on a PC. Clearly, ray tracing can still crush this hardware, especially in 4K, which is why NVIDIA is investing so much in other techniques and ways to upscale resolutions. If you're lucky enough to have a high refresh rate monitor or TV, the 3080 will also really help you get the most out of that. 
I reached around 119 FPS in the Wolfenstein Youngblood benchmark with 4K and ray tracing enabled. Uh, and that also used DLSS, so that seriously helped there. Meanwhile, the 2080 Ti could only really hit around 70 FPS. I've argued for a while that frame rates matter more than just raw rendering resolution, but the magic of the 3080 is that it really lets you get the best of both worlds there. It also stayed pretty cool as it was delivering all this performance. Uh, it only heated up to around 80 Celsius while I was benchmarking and playing a lot of games like Control. The 2080 Ti, meanwhile, idled around 40 Celsius and got all the way up to 86 Celsius when I was under load there. The 3080 is pretty loud when you're stressing it, but I did notice that idle sound is a lot better. The 2080 Ti always had a bit of a loud whining fan noise that spun up quite a bit. The 3080, it's sometimes hard to tell it's actually on. The 3080 will also come in handy for compute heavy operations like video rendering and uh, anything that can really take advantage of GPU computing. So that's gonna make it very useful for prosumers and content creators. If you're an actual media professional, you'll probably wanna wait for the 1499 RTX 3090 to come out on September 24th though, just because it's really gonna be a lot faster and if you're dealing with these workloads all the time, you'll probably see a huge difference. So here's the real question. Do you need the 699 RTX 3080? I think it's a great option for gamers with deep pockets and who demand some of the best performance out there. But the RTX 3070, which is gonna be 499, is also faster than the 2080 Ti, and that is a much more compelling price point for a lot of gamers, I'd say. I think this card, the 3080, is really meant for the people who, you know, banked on the 1080 four years ago and never saw the need to upgrade. This is the big upgrade leap you've really been waiting for. I don't think ray tracing and the few games that supported it was enough for the 20 series, but you know, the call of 4K gaming plus ray tracing and even higher frame rates, that's gonna be hard to deny. And if you don't need to buy a new card right away, it's always smart to wait a bit and see what happens. We haven't heard anything about AMD's next generation cards yet, but we know their next uh, Radeon hardware is gonna be in the next generation consoles from Sony and Microsoft, so you can bet we'll be hearing more from AMD soon. And judging from their track record, you can expect them to come in cheaper than Nvidia's cards and deliver comparable performance too. While Nvidia's RTX 20 series GPUs were all about the potential of ray tracing, the 30 series is built for a world where it actually exists. It's an expensive GPU, it's hard to deny that, but it's still a great value for the performance you get. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our PC hardware news, and if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.